let's keep going with uh, our discussion of index sets. Um, I want to pick up right where I left off, and I want to think about what happens if we want to not just label our sets with integers. I mean, in, the, in these examples that we were just talking about, we had sets like A1, A2, and so forth. But what if we wanted to use a different kind of labeling? For example, suppose we wanted to have a set A sub R for every real number R. I'll give an example of why you might want to do that uh, in a minute. But the note, it turns out that's perfectly legitimate. Um, and the, the notation for that is instead of writing, I mean, let's look at the case where we wrote U the union as i goes from 1 to infinity of ai. We could write that instead as the union over all i in the natural numbers of ai. And this would mean for each i in the natural numbers, so for i equals 1, 2, 3, and so forth, we take the set ai and we construct the union of all of these. So we take the elements that occur in at least one of them. Um, we could instead, I mean, if we had, for instance, a set for every integer, we might have a minus 3 union a minus 2 union a minus 1 union a 0 union, sort of extending in both directions. And this we would write as the union for i in the integers of a i. And that would mean as i runs over not just the natural numbers, but the integers, we would get a set a i and we would take the union of all of them. And it doesn't even have to be numbers. Let me give you a sort of a Connecticut example of this. So uh, Connecticut has eight counties, uh, Tolland, Wyndham, New Haven, New London, Middlesex, Litchfield, Hartford, and Fairfield. And in each of those counties, there's a bunch of towns. There's something like 160 towns in Connecticut, and they're divided up into these counties. And so we could make a, a set for each county, we could make, and I've written it as T of C, but you could also write it as T sub C, T of C to be the set of towns in county C. So I give you the example, if C happens to be Tallinn County, then T of C consists of Andover, Bolton, Columbia, Coventry, Ellington, Hebron, Mansfield, Summers, Stafford, Tallinn, Union, Vernon, and Willington. Those are the towns in Tallinn County. So in this situation, what is the union over C in C of T of C? Well, this means the set of elements in any or at least one of the counties. In other words, it's the set of towns. Because every town is in a county and so every town is going to belong to at least one of these T of C's. And when you put them all together, all that you have are the towns in Connecticut. And I, what about the intersection? Well, that would have to be a town that belonged to every county. But each town only belongs to one county. So there is no town that belongs to every county. So this would have to be the empty set. Let's look at a couple of other examples. It's a little bit fancier example. Here, I'm going to start by defining a set using set builder notation that I'm going to call R plus. So R plus is the set of positive real numbers. We could also write this as zero infinity in our interval notation. So if we were going to draw a picture of it, it's everything here, but not including zero. And I want to use this set as our index set. And I'm going to define for each element of our index set a set A sub R, which is the set of elements X and Y in the plane such that X squared plus Y squared is less than R squared. So what does this mean? So for instance, A sub 1 is the interior of the unit circle because it's the set of points such that their squared distance to the origin is less than one. So here's A1, it's inside the unit circle. What about A2? Well, A2 is the set of points x squared plus y squared less than four. 
So it's going to be the set of points inside the circle of radius 2. So A sub R is the in interior of the circle of radius R in the plane. And there's one of these for each real number. As the R changes, the circle gets bigger and smaller. So what is the intersection of these sets? Well, we have to ask what, if any, pair XY is in AR for every R. I'm going to write, I, that was a bad use of notation, so I'm going to write it in English. So, in other words, that means that x squared plus y squared has to be less than r squared for every r in r plus, which is every r bigger than zero. In other words, it has to lie inside the circle of radius r, no matter how small r gets. And there's only one point that does that, 0, 0. Because 0, 0 is in AR. Because remember, R is always bigger than 0. So even though this is a strict inequality, because a r is in r plus, this is always bigger than 0, and this is equal to 0. But nothing else is, because if, you, if, if this number is not 0, I mean, if you had sort of, let's say, x, y, then if you choose r less than, let's call it r prime, less than x squared plus y squared, then xy will not be in ar prime, and so it's not in the intersection. So this infinite intersection that we're looking at here captures the set of points that lie inside an arbitrarily small circle around the origin. And the only point that lies inside an arbitrarily small circle around the origin is the origin itself. What about the union of these sets? Well, that might even be a little bit easier to think about because if you're in, to be in the union, you just have to be in at least one of them. And as those circles get bigger and bigger, eventually every point is going to be in one of those circles. So, event, so every point x, y is going to be in a, r once r gets bigger than, once r squared gets bigger than x squared plus y squared. And r squared can get as big as it wants because it just has to be a positive real number. So, um, so every point belongs to at least one of the a, r's. And so every point is in the plane is in the union of the ARs so the the union of these is R2 so this is worth a certain amount of pondering the two examples here so maybe I should put here that the intersection just to answer the question of all of these things this is just the point zero zero the only point inside all of the circles. But every point is inside at least one of the circles. In fact, once the circles get big enough, they grow. And once you once a point's in one of them, it's going to be in all the bigger ones.
here's another example with infinite, where we have infinite uh, intersections. So here our index set is, um, is the natural numbers, and our sets, so A1, is the interval from 0 to 2, because it goes from 0 to i plus 1. A2 is the interval from 0 to 3. A3 is the integral interval from 0 to 4, and so on. Now these intervals are in the real numbers. That's the definition when you have an interval like this. So the index set is the natural numbers, but the sets themselves are subsets of the real numbers. So if we want to take the intercept, we could even draw, let's draw a picture of this. We can draw a picture. So here's the, here it is. So that A1 goes from 0 to 2. A2 goes from 0 to 3. A3 goes from 0 to 4, and so on. So the intersection of these are the points that belong to all of them. And in fact, 0 to 2, A1, is inside A2, which is inside A3, and so on because the, inter the closed interval from 0 to 2 is inside the closed interval from 0 to 3, and so on. So when we take the intersection of all of these, A1 is contained in all of them. So this intersection is actually equal to A1. So why is it equal? Well, every element of this, of this intersection, sorry, well, first of all, A1 is contained in every one of these sets. So any element, if X is in A1, any element of A1 is in this intersection. On the other hand, if it's in this intersection, then that means that it has to be in 0, 2, because it has to be in every one of these sets, so in particular it has to be in 0, 2. So if x is in this intersection, then x has to be in 0, 2. So the elements of the set 0, 2 are exactly the same as the elements of this intersection, and so the two sets are equal. So a1 is equal to this intersection. 